Inside this box is one of the most expensive keyboards I've ever built. Howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Cyberboard Terminal. Now, there might be a twist here and that maybe I don't have to build it at all. It's a board with an $800 price tag, but maybe, maybe we'll figure out why people would spend $800 on it. So we've got the cyberboard from Angry Meow, but this is a very special cyberboard. There's something particular going on here that's very special and we're checking that out right now. It comes in this very thick box. Uh... Wow, guys, it came with a silver QR code scanner. Oh, it's for WeChat. Never mind, don't scan that. Um, it comes with some keycaps. Is this keyboard fully built already? Am I not actually building a keyboard? <laughs> One of the most expensive keyboards I've ever built. Okay, I think it's actually fully built. So this guy came with some stickers. We don't care about stickers. And then also some other stuff, which might be even more stickers. Um, is this an NFT? Um, don't screenshot this, please. Whatever you do, do. We've got some things here. So these look like stabilizer tapes, which I'm not sure why we would need if it's built already. Just to describe the smell that I'm smelling. Very toxic. It's whatever this foam is. Smells actually awful. Um, maybe they potentially laced this with something, so I would give it a better review. Here is the cyberboard terminal. I think it was a really weird choice to cover the whole entire board in a plastic film. Honestly, it makes it really hard to plug in. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I think you could still kind of plug it in, but the plastic film is a bit of a weird choice. I think typing is going to be a little bit rough on this thing. I'm getting a little bit of key chatter here, and honestly, the, the experience is pretty mushy overall. Definitely the plastic wrap mod is, is not paying off here. We're going to actually take off the plastic now. <laughs> and now for the hit news segment, Hippio gives information about the keyboard while peeling plastic for one minute. Well, howdy, hey, post at a hippio here to tell you about this keyboard. That's because when I was doing this stream, they literally didn't give me like any info on the keyboard. In fact, I wasn't even supposed to do this stream. They told me to take it down afterwards because I broke embargo. Oopsie. So this keyboard went up for pre-order on April 28th and sold for $600 for the bare bones version. That is really expensive. It was also for this version, 810 with the keycaps and switches. This is not budget. Now this keyboard was sent to me for free by Angry Meow, but I was not paid for this and I'm not getting any affiliate revenue for it. But is it worth that price tag? Let's find out. Mm. Or is this like a paper sticker? I hope it's not a paper sticker. I actually like to... Oh, it's a... It's a paper sticker, guys. After all of that, they hit me with a paper sticker. It was never the switches that sounded talk, it was his fingers. Yeah, look at my nails, they're so gross right now. This nail in particular, this this nail in particular, that's so weird how it's so, oh, so, sorry, God, ah. Um, anyways, talking about the keyboard, this keyboard has a beautiful backplate. One of the prettiest backplates I've ever seen on a keyboard. This is a Black Mirror PVD stainless steel weight plate. I'm reading that off of the Geek Hack thread. We've got this guy up here who looks quite elegant. So there's a time, it says 12, 40, which is odd because it's 10 minutes off. Here's a cool little programmable mode. There's lots of different programmable modes. That was like a matrix. This is like a Tetris. Somebody says too bad the bottom screen isn't often seen. I'd like to raise you something real fast. Okay, so for reference, I'm gonna hold this at head height real fast. You can kind of see the screen as a head looking at the keyboard. It's not like you don't see it. Like this is me like leaning back in my chair. So you can kind of still see the screen. So I'm a little bit interested here. Uh, originally they had keycaps with legends on them and they've decided here to install instead go with completely smooth glossy keycaps like these guys are shinier than gmk that have been used by a sweaty gamer for roughly six years so it's it's very reminiscent of my cyberboard that i built with the palm jelly keycaps um these have no texture if you're a gamer if you're typing a lot your fingers are gonna slip slide it's almost as if they're looped but aesthetically it looks gorgeous there's also i think rgb in here right Whoa, that's gamery. Look at that. You can see it through the side of the keyboard too. Ooh. If you want to feel like you're in the matrix. Try voice commands. Keyboard, 
do my taxes. Paying the IRS $200,000. Uh, nothing's working. I'm sorry, guys. Let's investigate a little bit further. Switch reveal time. I'm going to do a double whammy of switch and stabilizer reveal. Oh, they pulled a hippiotech. So these look like kiwis. And this is, this is a TTC, maybe like a, some type of modified ice candy, but it's linear. Not bad. The hot swap sockets, blue. Very interesting. Apparently this thing is gasket mounted, question mark? So let's test that out. Well, if it's gasket mounted, it's not doing much. Guys, do you want me to take this apart and show you the gasket? So this guy uses the tiniest little screws. I don't think I have a wow stick fit for them. Okay, so this is an entirely separate piece. As you can see, we do have spots for the gaskets to make connection. Right here, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then we also have a battery compartment and the little bits for it to wirelessly charge, which are kind of cool, the little connector bits. That's interesting. The gaskets are actually very squishy, and it makes me wonder why there's really not much gasket performance in there. They've got some squish to them, and like you see a little bit of like, there's some bounce and play here. It's also got this little silicone little guy in blue hot swap sockets. That's cool. They're TTC hot swap sockets. So they've got one gasket on each little bit. It's not like a dual gasket sided thing. The squish there is there's like, it's squishy, but there's almost no room for it to flex. So the gasket is really just doing a tiny bit of vibration isolation. So essentially, as we've discovered now, this keyboard is gasket mounted. The mm. gaskets do not do very much. And the hot swap sockets are blue. I don't have any need to further disassemble this right now, so I'm not going to. In fact, I'm going to put it instead back together. So yeah, it looks incredibly pretty with the LEDs. Now, final thoughts. I'm estimating the price tag for this to be some money above or below a thousand US dollars. I'm just gonna assume it's gonna be like five, 600 bucks maybe. It's probably not the most worth it unless you're here for the aesthetic. If you're here for the best keyboard acoustics, eh. If you're here for the best keyboard feel, eh. If you're here for the best keyboard looks, that's entirely subjective, but there is literally nothing else like this. Okay, so an update after using this thing for about a week. Also, no, that's not a fire behind me, that's a humidifier. First impressions, it is the fingerprint magnet of a lifetime, look at this. Now, if I had this up on a nice little shelf, you know, that might be kind of cool, but would I use this thing? Uh, Overall, the typing experience after about a week is that the switches that came with it aren't that good. They feel like stock Kiwi switches. I know you guys are big thock hounds. You're not gonna get thock with this type of plastic on the keycaps. Like, I just don't think that's possible. Really, for that $800, all you're getting is the really gorgeous engineering and pretty look. You also get a massive hole in your wallet and a large amount of regret. You'll get them next time, you guys, maybe, I hope.